just going to snip the ends off. Here's this! Hi, I'm Daz and she's B. We've had our motorhome since June last year and have already had many adventures and made plenty of maverick mistakes on our travels. Our dreams of owning a home in France were shattered after Brexit, then we failed to move somewhere more rural after our house sale fell through in the UK. We bought Stampy, our 10-year-old motorhome, in the hope that we can live a life less ordinary and explore the UK and Europe with our kids and our greyhound Sammy whenever we can. Please join us as we try new things make memories as we escape in the motorhome. Hello and welcome back to Escape in the Motorhome. We are in a lovely village just outside Amersham. We're on our way up to Milton Keynes this morning. It's a lovely bright Sunday morning. I'm just going to take you back in time to when we first arrived last night. Hello folks, welcome back to another video. This week we've escaped to something that resembles the lunar surface. Bless B, she's been driving all the way tonight because I've not been feeling so good. And this is our park up for the night. <laughs> Certainly testing out Stampy's suspension. It's a wee church, but uh, not at all spooky. So it looks like apart from this car, we've got the whole place to ourselves. Welcome to another video. Now I've not been feeling so good uh, these last two days, so B's done all the driving signs, so bless her, there she is. Now this was a little park up on Parkland, like we're in a church car park. We did hear that you get a lot of dog walkers. And then tomorrow, we're off to a special event with my nephews playing football in a cup final at the MK Don Stadium in Milton and Keynes. That's going to be ace. 9.25, everyone's awake and everyone's tired. This is a lovely little park up. We read about this one on Search for Sites and it's a beautiful big potholy car park right next to a church and apparently this is illuminated overnight but we didn't park down here because uh, we just wanted to go to sleep. Well this is convenient for the morning dog walk. Penwood. Ancient and irreplaceable. It's one of the largest ancient woods in the Chiltern Hills. Oh, I'm going to try and keep to her route this morning. This is red route, apparently. A little bit bleary-eyed this morning. <laughs> Excuse the appearance, deary me. You do get the very worst of me when I am unmade up with hair just thrown up in the morning. Talking of just thrown up, unfortunately yesterday, Dad's was really poorly. We had friends over in the evening. I cooked up a massive Indian banquet. So I made all this stuff, and during the day, he said he wasn't feeling great. And then um, they first arrived and he disappeared and came back looking like a ghost, having thrown up six times. And uh, that was yesterday, um, all day, attempting to do stuff on the house. We've got lots of jobs to do, including putting locks on the doors and things. So he was determined to do that yesterday, even though he was feeling very, very rough. So I don't know whether it was something he caught when he went for uh, sort of 48 hours in Italy for work, or whether he accidentally caught something on his hands having walked Sammy um, and then just ingested it as you do but it was a bit of bad luck for poor Daz because he hates being out of action and for all the days of being out of action of course it wasn't a typical work day it was a sunny Saturday which is when we try and attempt to do a three page list of things to get ready for the house he did manage to put the lock on the door I did manage to paint the wall in between lots of other things and now we are up just outside of Beaconsfield is that how you say it? Beaconsfield, Beaconsfield? We've gone a little bit into the woods, I suppose. We're gonna carry on up to Milton Keynes this morning. Uh, so there still are some bluebells. Just over there is a haze of purple. Doesn't quite give it justice on the camera as always, but from here, it's like a strange mirage. Oh, hello. I appear to have picked up a little character on my arm. I've seen quite a few little caterpillars hanging from trees above me. And obviously one of them has decided to come along for a ride. But I tell you what, if you stay on my coat, you're not going to get anywhere where you want to go. 
you're probably best off staying in the tree because I don't have much food for you. Sammy's also got some stowaways. Now we can jest about it, I suppose, but it's a similar way as ticks can get onto the body. These are just two little caterpillars. So when we go to France, we're definitely gonna get one of those special collars, as well as your normal flea treatment. We're gonna get one of those special collars that get rid of any beasties like ticks, sand flies. Okay, so half an hour later, I suppose there's always a risk when you're walking in the woods that you don't know, that actually you might get a little bit lost. So I've just discovered that uh, Daz has got his uh, location setting on which is always useful we found it quite useful when trying to find our 13 year old when he's not answering his phone so i've been able to find out where daz is and then set directions to find him he's only six minutes walk away luckily there's lots of friendly dog walkers out today and sammy's already had a nice little lurch around with a lurcher my goodness me he would so love to be off lead i wish i could let him off lead i've got to try and do some recall training or something with him but there are roads around here and if he went scooting off at the speed he wanted to scoot off with this lovely lurch when they were bounding about and barking. I don't think I've seen him for dust. Quite possibly the most perfect cricket pitch ever. This pub called the Squirrel had sun loungers out. So the sun loungers were laid along in a row so that the punters could watch the cricket whilst having a little afternoon drinky. Oh, that's a perfect way to spend a Saturday. A really pretty village. I love the fact that all of these cottages seem to have some sort of cricketing theme. This one's Keeper's Cottage. That one over there is Batsman's Rest. The one over there is Burning Balls. Well, I hope no balls were burning there yesterday. Mind you, it was hot. It looks fairly obvious here, but it isn't obvious from the road. If you're coming in from the cricket pitch where this church is. So this is what kept eluding us yesterday. There's a very small sign on this side of the road which says church and vicarage. And in the dark, that was really hard to see. And of course this was set back from the road in the dark as well, which isn't lit, so it's not easy to see where the church car park is. It feels a bit odd because you've got the vicarage on your left, so you feel like you're entering a private property. But actually this is public access down here, and this will lead you to the church car park. And now it's filled up with some cars, now it's past 8 o'clock, we've got a lot of dog walkers, and perhaps folk arriving for an early church service. No Stampy. Probably everybody's up now. Daz is probably wondering where we are. So a couple of weeks ago, Daz fitted some plug sockets down the end so we don't have spaghetti junction. Still a bit of spaghetti going on, but that's what happens with cables, but it looks so much better. And um, they're even nicer than the plug sockets we've got in our house. You're on the mend. Yeah, we're having some obligatory avocado uh, on bread, but this time on wraps. Okay. You, this is quite a brave thing to eat after uh, 24 hours of not wanting to eat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't. oh, man. You're definitely looking less grey than you were yesterday. No, I can't wait to get my appetite back. And yeah. then I'll stuff my face with a skip load of sugar. <laughs> Someone's feeling better being in the driving seat. Well done, dear. Back. You're back. <laughs> Still a bit wobbly, but you're okay. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, I'm going to take it easy rather than overindulge in a load of sugar and fat and then maybe reverse with all the good fortune I've had this morning. So let's see how it goes. Yeah, I was quite worried about you yesterday. You looked very, very, very peaky. I made him sit out in the garden with a blanket over him. And we were, I was worried if I went out there half an hour later, he might have uh, gone over <laughs> Rainbow Bridge. <laughs> we finally made it to MK Dom Stadium and Stampy had a perfect parking space just outside. Well, with just a few weeks left, the panic is starting to set in. So I'm out in the van today trying to tidy up the mess that is our electrical system at the back of the van. So far we've just been coping with like a, a plug extension which goes through a gap that happens to be there into the inverter. But the trouble is that little gap that's coming through in between the seats, the wire's getting chewed up, the extension lead is creating a trip hazard on the floor, it's all quite untidy. I've just basically got to be a little bit brave and start soaring into the cabinets beneath our feet 
to fit these plugs either side. And then I, I'm going to try, because I've looked around and I think there's a chance of running the wire from all the way from the inverter via these two plug sockets at the back, all the way down the van and under the seat. So hopefully down the front in the dining area while we're traveling, the boys will be able to charge devices via the USB or run their laptop off the plug via the lithium battery that lives in the back of the van. And possibly a little one over there because there's nothing going on behind there. And we've got so many devices that four plug sockets will probably won't even be enough. So all I've got to do today is be brave and cut a big fat rectangle out of there and then one out of there. Drill a couple of holes behind here to run cables. Job's done. Oh, if only it was that easy. There we go. I've measured twice. Time to cut and make a mess. <coughs> it's actually a bit dusty than I thought it was going to be. That's quite scary. Especially the thought as I'm cutting, thinking, if I've done this wrong, this is quite permanent. Also thinking, I bet Sammy could have gone through that in about half the time. Here's Daz! Okay, I'll tidy this all up in a minute. Great. Right, let's get this tidied up in a box on the back and some wires cut. Right, that's one side in. Unfortunately, my phone ran out of space, so I can't show you any beautiful hyperlapse video of me fitting that. It's time to do the other side, hopefully in half the time. Let's do this! Well, I'd say that went all right. In truth, oh, uh, it did go all right, actually. So I've got both plugs kind of where I want them. Kind of feel like there should be one here just because when the bed's down, you can reach the USB easier for charging phones at night. Anyway, I've got the plugs in where I want them. I've now just got to run a cable from there underneath the floor and up to this one. And then maybe today or maybe another day, run something from here. I'm gonna try and rod it next to this vent. But there's not much room. Right, I've got to get the wire from there to there and fix it underneath. I need a little chimney sweep. Snip the ends off. I could sleep down here. It's like an extra room. That was a bit tight. Okay, so now I've got the cable running underneath up to this side. I think ideally I probably should have pushed it to the back because I can see there's the space under it to store stuff, but the chances of it rubbing rubbing against the the cable that I've just fitted is quite high. So We'll see how that goes. I'm sure we'll be fine for our trip. So for now, wire this fella in and then I think I'm gonna call it a day and next step will be to try and rod some wires through to the front. So we're all running off the lithium battery, which is powered by solar to keep us off grid. It all sounds so easy, doesn't it?
Hi, welcome to the top of the motorhome. Up here we've got the large double. I say double, but actually it's bigger than a king size. Now this is where the three boys tend to sleep because it's so deep they can actually fit head to toe across this thing. When you measure it online, this comes up as something uh, close to something called an emperor size bed. And of course you can't buy cheap covers to fit those things. And not only that, but down the front here, it's this thick, but at the end, it's actually thinner, so it's a wedge shape. Now the make of the mattress itself is Italian, which goes with the make of the motorhome. So you can't, I can't seem to source uh, mattress protectors and covers on here as easy as you would do if it was just a king size. The reason we need a mattress protector uh, is because Phoenix is prone to nosebleeds. As a cost cutting exercise, I've bought super king size with elasticated edges. So I'm kind of hoping I'm going to be able to stretch it over this big bad boy here. Watch me pass or fail. That's not bad, is it? It looks like the Super King size fits this rather enormous mattress, which given it's a wedge, would probably cost a fortune to replace. So these are going to help make it last that bit longer when we've got three boys up there. The Waterproof mattress cover only cost about £12 on Amazon and the super king size white sheet was only about £9 so for just over £20 we've managed to give this mattress a lot more life. Well we're here at MK Don Stadium and the boys have just quickly gone across to Asda to get some snacks before the match starts and I'm having a little wander around with Sammy before he settles down in the motorhome for 45 minutes and there's so much floor food. Um, we're right by all the typical eateries. So we've got um, McDonald's and KFC and Subway. And of course, all over the floor, there's bits of burger and a few remainders of chips. <laughs> and Sammy's having a field day. Um, not what the plan was for this little walk before we go in to watch the match. Yeah, you can't wait to go and find more. But I think we're gonna go and have some chewy knots in your bed. It's half time and I've just come back to the motorhome to make a nice oat milk coffee and check on Mr. Sambo. One, two and three vents open. Beautiful sunny Sunday. We've enjoyed watching the football match and if you won, 4-1 and now we're heading back to spend a little bit of time with family before we drive back home. We've just made it to Brackley and we're having a little stroll around a lake after watching that football match because Daz needs to stretch his legs, the kids need some exercise before we go back home. And I think Sammy's grateful for being out of the motorhome. He's definitely enjoying his new sniffs. Before we go, we wanted to show you Duolingo. It's a free app that we use to help us with our French. There are multiple choice questions. Bon, bon. Vert, blanc. Listen and repeat challenges. Written challenges, both English to French and French to English. Ils sont français. Elles sont françaises. There are listening multiple choice challenges, and if your listening is as poor as mine, you can use the tortoise button to slow down the speech. Ta sœur est intelligente. There's also listening and written exercises. And if you happen to get something wrong, like I've demonstrated here, you get a chance at the end to redeem yourself without losing all of your hearts for the day. I would like to point out that we weren't sponsored to recommend this app. We just think the colors, the interactivity, the fact it's free is brilliant. And the kids and I have really enjoyed it. So why not give it a go? And perhaps you'll reach a 100 day streak just like I did. Well, that's all for now. Till our next escape. Merci d'avoir regardé.